Hey friends, welcome back. Today I'm gonna do an eyeshadow look with a 4 well palette for brown eyes. I am not a huge fan of the idea of makeup of eyeshadow colors for certain eye colors. For the most part, I think that you should wear colors that make you feel good. But there is some color theory behind the idea that certain colors can make uh, eye colors pop. I'm starting with brown eyes because I have brown eyes and because I know when I do the one for green eyes and hazel eyes, somebody's going to give me a hard time and say, but you don't have green eyes and hazel eyes. And so I just don't feel like taking that heat today. Okay. Just because a palette comes out that's for brown eyes doesn't mean that those are like the inclusive colors that people with brown eyes could wear. I would just say wear what makes you feel good first. And if you have no idea where to start, this might be a good place to start. So I've got some concealer on my eyes, uh, just really, really lightly to give the eyeshadow something to stick to. And I'm gonna fill my brows quick. I'll make sure everything that I used is in the description box. Just waxed my brows the other day and I overdid it a little bit. Please don't come at me. Sometimes y'all come at me about my eyebrows. Listen, I'm in my 40s. It's all I got left to work with. <laughs> And of all the features left on my face, my eyebrows are the ones that never sag. <laughs> they never swell. So we're starting with this color. It's number four in Lime Life. It's called uh, Rise Up. Now we're applying this shimmery gold color. It's called Gold School. From the inner corner, halfway over-ish, maybe a little further. Now we're going to use this brown color called Higher Ground as a liner. You could use a smoky liner brush like this if you wanted to smoke it out or something tight like this. I think I'm gonna use this tighter one. And I am going to put some setting spray on the back of my hand and get this brush wet. And now I'm gonna start on the outer corner of my eye. And the reason I'm starting on the outer corner is because I want it to be the darkest here. And I'm just gonna stamp it right into my lash line and work my way across. Just, I'm just gently, I was gonna say stabbing, no, stamping again. And I'm just gonna go about halfway over. Now we're going to put this same dark color and I'm gonna use a smaller brush. If you don't have a small smoky liner brush like this, a Q-tip works really well. And this is gonna go on the outer corner of the eye. And I'm literally just gonna kind of stamp it into place here. Now I'm gonna take a little blending brush and I'm just gonna blend the gold color and that dark color together. But Kendra, you did nothing with the blue. Okay, I wanna show you a few fun things that you can do with the blue. Some setting spray back on my hand and I'm using my smoky liner brush. Make sure you clean off the um, excess product if there's anything left on it. And I am gonna apply this wet because I want it to be really poppy. So I'm going to start on the outer corner of my eye where I already have that brown and bring that in. So I'm going to grab a little bit of a smaller eyeshadow brush, but not quite as small as that um, smoky liner brush. And my, I'm going to get my brush just slightly, slightly wet. And I'm going to add some blue to that outer corner. Just kind of pat it into place right over, right over the brown. And then using my little blending brush here that's cleaned off, I'm just going to clean up the edges and even them out. So when you do that, when you layer like a darker color over a brown, you're gonna get like hints of that blue, but it's not gonna be like in your face blue. But maybe you're like me and you like in your face blue. Well then take it another step further. Let me show you something else fun. And add it to the inner corner. You can bring this all the way to the inside. If you wanted to deepen your crease, a pointed blending brush, and you could take just a little bit of that dark brown and I mean it when I say a little bit, this is really pigmented stuff. I 
Well, let's clean it up. You can never judge a look until it's complete. So let's do some foundation. Ta-da! Let's talk a little bit about contouring. When I first learned how to do makeup, you know, in the 80s and 90s by watching my mom and um, commercials on television and that's pretty much all. The 90s was full of a lot of bronzer for me and uh, very little of anything else. No, no blush or highlight or anything like that. The concept of contouring or at least what we now call contouring has been around for a very long time. When I decided to really study makeup, I got the book Baking Faces by Kevin Aquan. And these concepts were certainly taught in that book. In recent years, we started calling it contouring. And now there are contour palettes, powders and sticks. A lot of people find it very overwhelming, especially if you look it up online, you can see people literally contouring for hours, feels like. And that's an option. And there's no part of me right now that's saying it's a bad option. The makeup I want to do and the makeup I want to teach you how to do is the kind of makeup that you do to quickly get out of the house and uh, move on with your day and to, um, to feel your best in your own skin. So contouring for me really is no more than bronzer and highlighter. Sometimes I get fancy with a liquid highlighter, but when it comes to just everyday makeup that I want to look and feel my best and get out the door, these are the ones that I use. I typically use a brush like this, kind of a pointed powder brush. I've got some bronzer on here. I tap off the excess. You see a lot of uh, makeup artists do that, and it's just so you don't have too much pigment in one place. Also, you can take absolutely everything I say and tell me I'm full of it and it doesn't apply to you. That's okay. But this is what applies to me and what I teach my clients. So I always teach people to st start at the top of your ear. Pretend like there is an imaginary line from the top of your ear to the corner of your mouth. And that's where you start to apply that bronzer to um, lift your cheekbones. So that a lot of people do is they suck in their face and they apply it down here. And that ends up dropping your face a little bit. By literally running the brush across the top of your ear and going this way, you create just a tiny bit of lift. Now, the reason I start at the top of the ear and move this way is because when you first put that product on your brush, that's the most product that you have. And if you start in the middle and go this way, you're gonna have darker product here and it'll get lighter. As far as like where else to provide shadow, um, if you have a tall forehead, uh, contouring the top of your forehead gives the appearance of a little bit more of a narrow forehead. If you like the idea of um, a chiseled jaw, a lot of people will put some contour or some bronzer through here or even create like a three on the side of their face. You know, the only real hesitation I have with that is that sometimes when we do that, we don't blend this down. And then we end up with a serious line of demarcation there where, you know, your face is clearly one color and your neck is clearly another. So a little bronzer down your neck, if you're going to do that, will help. A lot of people ask me about contouring the nose. I will be honest with you, and, and for the purpose of real life, I don't do a lot of nose contouring. It's just not my thing. But when you do, or if you want to, I recommend using a small, like an eyeshadow brush. Take your, your bronzer, and you can create a bit of a shadow on the sides of your nose. And what that will do is create a more narrow appearing nose. It can also make your nose look more straight. Next, we're gonna look at highlighting. So this is just a basic highlighting blush. When you highlight, the idea is where you highlight is where you lift. This is my favorite place to highlight. So this lifts the face up. What I don't like to do is bring that color too far forward. I usually kind of use the color of my eye as the stopping point. So you can see it just gives a very subtle glow. Often people will highlight their nose, the upper lip, maybe up the top of the brow bone. But in all honesty, the primary place that I do highlighting is through, is just through there. And that's really all. And then the last step, if you want to, is blush. You've got your bronzer and your highlighter here, and your blush kind of goes in the center of those and just kind of blends it together. All right, now that we've got highlight and contour and, and blush on, uh, let's do some lashes. Okay, I'm gonna keep my lips kind of simple today. 
I'm going to use Lime Life's Enduring Lip Color in Birthday Cake. And I'm going to top that with a red lip gloss. I don't think I've ever worn... I don't think I have ever worn this combination before and I like it. I hope you enjoyed all of these tips and uh, maybe try something new with your makeup. Have a fantastic day. Will somebody help me figure out how to end these videos? Like, what do I say at the end? I need to start studying people's endings because if you've made it this far, you deserve to be bid adieu in a kind way that makes you smile. Help me out. <laughs> See you later.